Hi there, this is Webzir. In this video, we are going to talk about strings in Java. Earlier, when we talked about how we can store a single character, we were discussing the char data type. The string data type lets you store a single word or several words or paragraphs or documents right inside it if you want. All you have to remember is that you put everything between a pair of double quotes. So let's take a look at what are strings. Text like hello world, hello123, this weird password here, they all form a part of strings. It is basically a sequence of characters defined inside a pair of double quotes. There are three ways you can make a string in Java. Using the string class, using the string builder or using the string buffer. Let's take a look at the string class in Java. So how do you make a string using this? Simple. You just say string, call the variable whatever you want. I have called it str here and you say equals to and put a double quote inside which you can write whatever you want and at the end add a semicolon. Notice that this is quite similar to how you would make an int or double or float except that you need a double quote here to ensure that the compiler distinguishes between the text that you want to display on the screen versus the instructions that you write to make the compiler run something. While creating this string, str points to the text hello string. But what if I don't want any valid value? In that case, I can assign the value to null. Null is a special value which means several things. It means that there is no value, it means there is no object, it is unknown, it is unavailable. If you are more curious, just type what is null in Java on Google and you will get a lot of answers that talk about the meaning of null. Now I can assign the value once again by saying null str equals to say hello string. So now null str points to the text hello string in memory. There are other ways I can create a string. I can say string new str which is the name of my variable equals to new string and then I can pass the text that I want to create. I can also create a string from an existing string or piece of text by saying string dot value of and I can pass the text that I want and then it would be assigned to this variable string on the left hand side. Now let's take a look at how I can find the length of a string in Java. There's my text, hello world. Notice that the first character starts at position 0 and ends all the way at position 10. So there are 11 characters in this string. I construct our string the normal way or any of the above ways that we discussed and I can easily find its length by calling the length method on the string variable that is str dot length and it will print 11 on the screen. Now let's take a look at some of the fun things that we can do with strings. One of them is called concatenating. In simple words, it means joining two strings. So I have a text variable here called str. It points to the value called hello in memory. And now I say str plus equals to world. Now we both know that str will finally point to the text hello world in memory. The same way I can attach it without using the plus equals sign in the hard way and there I would be saying str equals to str plus exclamation mark which will point str to the text hello world with an exclamation mark at the end. Now this is quite similar to the plus equals and minus equals operators that we were using earlier in are integers and doubles and floats. Now take a look at this method concat. Now instead of using plus, I can use this method concat which roughly does the same thing. I can pass the word again and this time str will point to this text which says hello world exclamation mark and again at the end which is joined at the end of the string. Concat or append or concatenation simply means one thing. Take a word or a string and attach it to the end of something which is existing. Now let's take a look at escape sequences. Now special characters that you want to type in your strings without your Java compiler complaining about them. I'll be showing you what these characters are in the next video. 
when we play with strings on IntelliJ IDEA. Now let's move to who's equal and who's not. So first I say string S1 equals to hello. S1 is going to point to that area. Now notice that if I say S2 is hello, they both point to the same piece of text in memory. Now of course this is done to conserve memory, obviously. If you have string S3 that says by, again the piece of text by in memory and S3 is going to point to that piece of text. Now if I say S4 is new string hello, this is going to create a separate piece of text hello in a different area of the memory called heap. Whenever I use the new keyword, anything I do with it is going to create an object or it is going to create data in a separate area of the memory called the heap. Which means I can say S5 equals to hello here. That's going to be a separate piece of text because this is a small edge compared to this one which is a capital H. Now let's see who is equal and who is not. So S1 equals equals S2 is true because S1 and S2 are pointing to the same piece of text in memory. If I say S1 equals equals S4, this is going to be false. Now if you say S1 dot equals S4, then you get true because equals method compares the contents of the two string instead of the checking who's pointing where. So S1 dot equals ignore case S5. Notice that S5 is a hello with a small edge and S1 is a hello with a capital H. They are still equal because ignore case will ignore the alphabetical differences between the two. And S1 dot equals S3 will return false because S3 simply has by in its contents and S1 says hello and obviously they are not equal. Now let's see some of the methods that we can have in the string class. So there's my text, hello world. It is 11 characters long, starts at position 0 goes all the way up to 10. Now if I say index of, I am trying to find out where is the letter E placed inside the text. So this will return 1 because as you can see, E is here at position 1. Then if I say index of LO, which is this complete part of the text starting at E and ending at O, it starts at position 1 and that is what index of method would return if I pass a string and try to find its index. Now if I say index of O comma 5, notice that O appears for the first time here at position 4. But I am simply telling the index of method to skip the 5 positions in the beginning and then start looking for O. Therefore the first place where it finds O is going to be 7 which is returned over here. I can use the char at method where I pass the index and find out which character is present at that index. For example, at the index 3, I have the character L which is present over here. I can get a part of the string by telling where it should start with the help of the substring method. Notice that I pass 3 here and it starts all the way from LO and returns me whatever is left till the end of the string, which would be LO space word. Now let's take a look at some more methods. Here I can use the same substring method and I can tell a start and an end. So I start at 3 and I end at 9. But notice that the last position is not included. It gives me LO space WOR. And I can say str.contains where I can find if a particular character or string is present. So if I say z over here, notice that our text does not have z anywhere. So it's going to give you false. Now is empty, as the name suggests, tells you if the string is empty or not. So this empty string here, which is represented by these double quotes, would return true if you call is empty on it. Now there's two uppercase that will convert the text and return a new string which is the complete uppercase version of the text. Similarly, we have a two lowercase as well. And now let's take a look at the final two methods. The trim method is going to remove all the extra spaces at the beginning and the end of the text. So here I have hello and I have some extra spaces in the beginning and the end and that will be removed giving me just the word hello without the spaces at the leading and trailing areas. 
Now there's the other method which is split that is going to take your string and it is going to split it into an array and we'll talk about what an array is as we go further. For now, all you need to know is it gives you the values separately. Now there's another method called join that lets you take different strings like apples, oranges, potatoes and merge them together such that they are separated by a comma in between. Now we are going to take a look at all these methods in the next video when we play with our code in IntelliJ. For now, you guys have a lot of work when it comes to the Googleables section. Be sure to type all these in Google. Read the methods, read what they take, what they return and how to use them along with examples from Stack Overflow and other relevant websites. Now there is one little text that I missed in this area and that would be the Java memory model. Be sure to google this as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video on IntelliJ. In the meantime, have a nice day.